Have you ever wondered how some people are able to resist the temptation of a warm chocolate chip cookie? Or they can motivate themselves to exercise when they don't really want to? It turns out that willpower is not a rare magical gift that some people have and others don't. It's a trait we all share and that we can grow with practice. Using functional MRI scans, which highlight regions of brain activity, Neuroscientists have identified a focal area that functions as a center for tenacity and goal-directed behavior. In the next few minutes, we'll briefly review the science that shows where it is, what it does, and what we can do to train it. Let's get to it. Researchers have discovered that the anterior mid-cingulate cortex, located in the frontal lobes of the brain, interconnects with multiple overlapping neural circuits including the autonomic nervous system, which is our fight, flight, or freeze response, the salience network that integrates emotional and sensory stimuli, and allostatic interoceptive networks, which detect internal states of the body and work to maintain balance and homeostasis. It also has links to executive functions for decision-making, the motor system to initiate movement, as well as dopamine, noradrenergic, and serotonin terminals, which suggests that the anterior mid-cingulate cortex plays a role in motivation. Based on these observations, the anterior mid-cingulate cortex is considered a critical, centrally located communication hub in our brains. The authors of this review propose that this uniquely connected position allows the anterior mid-cingulate cortex to weigh predicted energy requirements against predicted rewards and to allocate physiological and attentional resources to achieve desired goals. The first half of the statement means that the AMCC is involved whenever we face a choice and have to do a cost-benefit analysis about whether the effort will be worth the outcome. And this is a computation that we can do from the couch. For example, I can debate the pros and cons of cleaning out the garage today and maybe decide in my mind that it would be worthwhile to do, but it's the second half of the statement here that's key. The AMCC also functions to allocate the physiological and attentional resources to achieve desired goals. This is the powerful oomph that propels us to take action. This is what will get me up off the couch to actually go clean the garage. So in terms of willpower or tenacity, the anterior mid cingulate cortex is not only involved in determining whether the expected benefit of a task is worth the effort, it also kicks in to help us marshal the physical energy and mental focus to do it. Given its broad interconnections in the brain, the anterior mid cingulate cortex has been linked to a diverse range of tasks and behaviors. For example, measures of grit and persistence correlate positively with higher levels of spontaneous activity and having a larger volume of the AMCC. Increased activity has also been associated with better academic and professional achievement, the ability to maintain an exercise program, and the capacity to choose a healthy food option over one that's more calorically dense. Cross-sectional studies have found that compared to other older adults, superagers have larger cortical thickness of the AMCC and greater intrinsic functional connectivity with other major networks in the brain, which is predictive of better memory performance. One caveat the authors of the review article point out is that increased or excessive fixation on goals that are achieved through the AMCC may be related to perfectionism and self-monitoring issues like what are commonly seen in eating disorders. They note that hyperactivity and increased anterior mid cingulate cortex connectivity have been observed in individuals with bulimia and anorexia nervosa. Though interestingly, this abnormally increased activity and connectivity appeared to improve in one study of patients who recovered. In contrast, decreased activation of the anterior mid cingulate cortex has been linked to apathy, where motivation and goal-directed behavior are blunted, like in dementia and Parkinson's disease, which are conditions that disrupt neural connections and alter metabolism in this area of the brain. Although depression can take various forms with different features, one study found that the degree of volume decrease in the AMCC was predictive of the severity of apathy symptoms. It's not yet known which is cause and effect. It's possible that depression or dementia may lead to decreased activity and volume of the anterior mid cingulate cortex, or it could be that AMCC dysfunction predisposes to developing depression or dementia. Either way, 
the association between apathy and the AMCC has been established by situations where there are lesions or injuries to this area of the brain. This has been done experimentally in rodents and primates, who then exhibited decreased willingness to expend mental effort or physical energy to complete tasks. And it has also been observed in the behavioral changes that occur with people who have had tumors in this area of the brain. Conversely, stimulation of the anterior midcingulate cortex has the opposite effect. Mapping studies from patients with epilepsy who required implantable electrodes to manage their seizures has demonstrated that focal stimulation of this area can elicit an increase in motivational drive and goal-directed behavior. Interestingly, this was also associated with a propensity for both internally and externally focused movement, which confirms a connection with the motor pathways in the brain and raises the possibility that the anterior midcingulate cortex's motivational function may be an embodied experience. In other words, when this area is activated, it may not just manifest as a mental or psychological sense of determination, it may also produce a physical urge to get up and take action. In a first-person account from two patients who had focal electrical AMCC stimulation, both had nearly identical physical and psychological responses with increased heart rate and the perception of worry or a sense of foreboding but this was matched with a strong will to face and overcome challenge. In answer to the question I posed at the beginning, why do some people seem to have more willpower than others? Researchers theorize that the variability among individuals is related to the strength of the functional connectivity between the AMCC and other parts of the brain that are involved in reward signaling, autonomic processing, and exercising cognitive control. When weighing the physical or mental costs of a task, those who have a higher density of interconnections through the AMCC appear to be willing to exert more effort to achieve a goal compared to others with less connectivity and activation. Both animal and human studies have found that the AMCC has protein receptors that are important for plasticity. And this suggests that this area of the brain can in fact be trained. And there's evidence from a 2006 exercise study in healthy but sedentary older adults to support this. 59 subjects ranging in age from 60 to 79 were randomized to a group that either did aerobic exercise for one hour, three days per week, or a non-aerobic exercise group that did stretching and toning with a focus on flexibility. The initial aerobic exercise was performed at 40 to 50% of heart rate reserve, which corresponds to moderate intensity and a self-rated exertion level between three to six on a scale of 10. Over time, this was increased to 60 to 70% of heart rate reserve, which is a perceived exercise intensity of approximately seven to eight on a scale of 10. All participants underwent functional MRI and VO2 max testing at the beginning of the study and after the six month intervention. And remarkably, the compliance was over 85% in both groups. The key findings were that compared to the control group that did only stretching, the aerobic exercise group had a statistically significant 16% increase in VO2 max, and significant increases in regional brain volume in both gray matter, which is composed of nerve cell bodies that perform information processing, and white matter, which are the nerve fibers that extend from cell bodies to transmit information. The white appearance is due to the myelin, which is an insulation wrap around these communication lines. It's worth noting that the primary aim of this study was to look at whether aerobic exercise had any effect anywhere in the brain, because it's well recognized that with aging, there are structural deteriorations of different areas of the brain, particularly the frontal, parietal, and temporal lobes, and this occurs in parallel with declines in cognitive function. So this study found that exercise training in previously inactive older adults not only spared this brain volume loss, but over a six month period, it increased the volume in key areas related to cognitive function. And the largest area of volume increase included the anterior mid cortex. In other words, the AMCC grew with exercise. An important point that has been identified in the neuroimaging studies is that the intensity of anterior mid cortex activity corresponds positively to effort. In fact, several studies in which subjects were given a choice between low or high effort tasks found that in those who opted to exert less effort, there was minimal to no activity in the AMCC, while higher effort correlated to higher activity. In his discussion of the anterior mid cortex, 
Andrew Huberman describes this effort requirement as internal friction or resistance. And this is what distinguishes the type of effort that induces AMCC activity from simple habit formation, because habits aren't necessarily difficult. It may be tedious to floss my teeth every night, but it's not actually hard to do. So in order to activate or expand your AMCC or increase its connectivity, you need to choose to do things that you don't intrinsically want to do or resist the temptation of things you really want, like the chocolate chip cookie. If you're someone who already exercises regularly or you're the type of person that really enjoys high intensity workouts, that's awesome for improving your VO2 max and overall health, but it may not increase your anterior mid cingulate cortex activity. And it's important to note that there's evidence to show that increases in AMCC activity apply across domains, whether a task requires physical or mental effort. One study showed that the neuroimaging response is the same. One approach that Humerman recommends is to muster the energy to take on a microsuck challenge each day. For example, if you do run regularly, tack a high effort sprint on at the end, or add a bonus set to your strength training at a time when you're really just ready to hang it up and take a shower. Or for a cognitive task, maybe you're fatigued from studying, but you can hold yourself there for another five or 10 minutes and do a recall exercise to summarize what you've learned. Or for me, since I don't think I have it in me to clean out the entire garage today, maybe my microsuck will be just to tidy up one shelf of the storage rack. The key takeaways from today are, one, that willpower and tenacity are not just nebulous, intangible qualities. They are linked to a focal anatomic area in the brain that we all have, the anterior mid cingulate cortex. Secondly, spontaneous activity in the AMCC and increased connectivity are predictive of persistence, grit, and willingness to exert extra effort to achieve a goal. Third, overcoming internal resistance and doing difficult things helps us build pathways in our brain to do difficult things. And this increased effort appears to activate the AMCC similarly for both mental or physical tasks. And finally, if you already do difficult things or you like to do difficult things, you may need to up the ante a bit and direct your effort towards something that you resist. Leave me a note in the comments below about what challenges you might try to take on now that you know making the effort is worth the effort to grow your willpower. If endurance training is the micro suck on your list, you're gonna to wanna to check out this video next to learn about the immense impact it has throughout our bodies. And if you'd like a two hour deep dive to learn more about willpower, tenacity, and the anterior mid cingulate cortex, I put a link in the description to the Huberman Lab episode that you can see on YouTube or listen as a podcast. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.